Hi, welcome back to My Mom Life. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Jordan, and today we're making copycat Auntie Anne pretzel bites. To get started, you're gonna need two cups of milk, one and a half tablespoons of yeast, six tablespoons of brown sugar, four tablespoons of butter melted, five to five and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of salt, and then you're gonna need three cups of warm water and a third cup of baking soda. The first step is to warm up your milk. So you're gonna warm it in your microwave for a minute to a minute and a half. And the way I know that it is not too warm is by sticking my finger in it. And if it is just warm enough, not too hot, then I know that it will not kill my yeast. If it's hot to your finger, like too hot to hold your finger in there, then it will kill your yeast. Once your milk is warm, you're gonna add one tablespoon of your brown sugar and your yeast and just give it a good mix and you're gonna let this sit and proof for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, your yeast should be nice and proofed and bubbly like this. If it doesn't do anything, then your yeast is probably not good. So that's how you know that your yeast is gonna work. Now that I have that done, I'll put it in my mixing bowl with the butter and the brown sugar. And then I'll add in the salt and flour. And I'm just gonna start with five cups of flour. I did end up adding that other half a cup, um, but I wanted to see how it came together first. It all depends on the humidity in your house and how warm or cold it is. So I would start with five cups and then if you need that extra half a cup, you can add that uh, later. So I am choosing to use my stand mixer today. You could definitely knead this by hand, but I find it much easier to use my KitchenAid and the dough hook. So I'm gonna knead this together for about 10 minutes or until it starts to pull away from the sides of the mixer. Like I said earlier, I did add in that half a cup of flour when I found it, the dough to be a little too sticky. Now that my dough is finished kneading, I am gonna go ahead and take some oil. I just pour a little bit in my hand like this, and then I make sure to cover the ball of dough as well as the bottom and sides of the bowl, just to make sure that the dough does not stick when we go to get it out. And yeah, it keeps the dough from drying out also. Now you just want to cover your dough and let it rest for about an hour or until it has doubled in size like this. This is such an easy dough recipe. If you're intimidated by making dough, please try this because it is really easy and pretty much fail proof. So now I'm gonna punch the dough down and I find it easier to spray my counter than to add in a bunch more flour. That way you don't risk drying the dough out. Now I am just going to use my bench scraper. You could use a knife and just um, divide this in half and then again in half, so in fourths. And then each fourth I'm gonna cut into three, try, I'm trying to make them as equal as I can, equal portions. So you will end up with 12 different lumps of dough. Now I am just going to take each of those sections and roll them out into a rope. You're going to kind of just stretch it and pull it until you can easily roll it out on your counter. Like I said, I did spray my counter so that it's not going to stick, 
you're just gonna roll it like this until you get it um, about, I don't know, it's gonna depend on how big each size of each um, dough ball that you made is, but you're gonna get it about like this. If hopefully you can see, there is like skinnier parts. It's okay, it all works out in the end. Just kind of smush it together to make it an even rope. So you're just gonna keep going until you get them all rolled out like this and then we will cut them into bite-sized pieces. Okay, now that I have them all rolled out, I am going to warm up that water. I just put it on the stove like this. You could get warm water out of your tap if you want. I just found it easier just to warm it up on the stove, really low temp. You're not wanting to boil it or anything. Just warm it and then dissolve that baking soda in that water. This solution is what makes this a pretzel. So this is super important. You're gonna wanna do this step. You're gonna take your warm water and baking soda over to where your pretzel uh, ropes are and like I said earlier you're just gonna cut them into bite-sized pieces so about an inch give or take if you've ever had these Antian bites at the mall this is about the size that they are and I am telling you these seriously taste just like the Antian's pretzel bites I think the key here is the brown sugar I could be wrong but I'm telling you they taste so close so I hope that you try these. Now I'm just going to tediously cut each of these ropes into bite-sized pieces, and then we will dip them into the baking soda and water solution and get them on a greased cookie sheet. You wanna definitely make sure that your cookie sheet is greased. They don't have to be spread out super far because they don't rise a ton more in the oven. Um, they do a little bit, but you'll see how close I have them on the pan and it's just fine. So here is my grease cookie sheet and I am just going to take a few at a time and put them in the solution, water and baking soda solution, and then take a slotted spoon and get them out and put them directly onto the baking sheet. Once you have your baking sheet full, you're going to um, sprinkle some coarse salt on them. I wish that I had a thicker, coarser salt. Um, than what I use so that you could actually see the salt kind of like like a pretzel salt but my my salt was pretty coarse it worked fine it was good but if you have pretzel salt that would work really really good so you're going to line your cookie sheet and then we will salt them and bake them in a 450 degree oven for about six to 10 minutes. I did eight minutes I found that it was perfect and they come out golden and looking delicious and then we get to the good stuff. Here they are out of the oven. They are golden and um, salted and yummy like this, but this is not an Auntie Anne pretzel. What makes this an Auntie Anne pretzel is the butter. So. We're going to take a stick of butter, melt it in the microwave like this, and then we are going to completely dunk the pretzel bites in the butter and then kind of tap off the excess a little bit and set them to the side so that they can soak up that butter and then they are done. These are the butter, like classic Auntie Anne's pretzel bites. I will show you the cinnamon sugar ones because those are another favorite in my house. I think you're either a cinnamon sugar fan or an original fan. Me, myself, I love the original. My husband loves the cinnamon sugar. So I'm just gonna continue to dunk half of my pretzel bites in the butter just like this to make half of them original. And then the other half, I will do cinnamon sugar. So for the cinnamon sugar, I just used a half cup of white sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. 
and then you're gonna go from the butter into the cinnamon sugar and that's it, it's, that's the only difference. You're gonna take them from the butter into the cinnamon sugar and get them nice and coated in that cinnamon sugar and let them kind of sit and soak all the yummy goodness up and then yeah, they're ready to eat. My family loves these. I'm telling you, my kids devour these and it's just, it's nice to be able to make something homemade instead of going to the mall and paying. If we were to all go to Auntie Anne's and all get pretzels, it would probably cost 50 bucks. So this is a much cheaper way to go and also, I mean, it's so delicious and it's so fun to see my family really, really enjoy something that I make. So. I hope that you try making these at home. If you do, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. I promise you this recipe is fail proof. It is super, super easy to do. It's just a little time consuming, but it's so, so worth it. You could even make some cheese dip for the original bites and some like icing sugar with a little bit of milk um, to make like an icing for the cinnamon sugar bites. That would be delicious, but just like this, my family loves them. They're so, so good. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around and I'll see you on my next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.